Are you struggling to hear yourself in orchestra? Is the intonation a little bit questionable and you're not sure if it's you or your stand partner? Well, it's a frustrating thing, but in today's video, we're going to dig into some techniques that you can use to hear yourself better and improve your playing in an orchestral setting. Look, I know how tricky it is to hear yourself in orchestra. I have been thinking about that for decades at this point. I remember being in youth orchestra like 30 years ago or something like that, or more than 30 years ago, trying to hear myself and putting my neck against the my ear all the time and then wondering why my neck hurt so much and uh, various basses and various strings and setups. And I have discovered First off, the instrument really does make a big difference in hearing or detecting your pitch or your tone or what you're doing in orchestra. This bass by Albert Jackstat made a huge difference. It is a very resonant bass and just the bass vibrates a lot. And I find that when I'm sitting in orchestra, I'm sitting for this video right now, I can just feel the whole bass vibrate so much better than other basses I've played. And so not only am I hearing the pitch and the bass is a little louder than many other basses, I can hear the pitch well and I can feel the pitch. This bass also has a lot of overtones, it's just very ringing bass, and it has a nice uh, kind of sizzle to the high end. I find that that is super helpful in picking my sound out of the group. I want nice bass contribution in orchestra. We're talking about orchestra here, um, but I also want a little bit of definition and so that I can hear myself. And also, uh, I found that if my setup feels just a touch bright to me, just a touch, that's usually just about perfect when we get out into the audience. If it's like super dark, like kind of vintage sounding, a lot of the time that doesn't seem to carry. And then as soon as the trombone or tuba player or the other bass players, or I was just playing with this mariachi group, <laughs> Uh, with San Francisco Symphony last weekend. Uh, as soon as they kick in, I just can't hear a thing. So bass matters and strings and setup definitely matter. And if you want to learn more about this bass, I'd be happy to do a deep dive. Leave a comment below. So I have found with this bass that sitting actually helps me detect my pitch. And pitch is mainly the reason why I want to be able to hear myself in orchestra. Uh, I think just zooming out philosophically, it's like, why do you want to hear yourself in orchestra so well? After all, you are one part of the whole. And I really do think that's true, I'll get into that later in this video, but I, if I am hearing myself super well, I'm probably not blending. And I remember back in high school talking to a girl who was in choir and saying, oh wow, I really loved the concert, I could hear you so well, and she said, that's not a compliment to a person in choir, you don't want to stick out like that. I think that's true for orchestra, but also, you don't want to be in this perpetual questioning fog of am I the one following up the intonation. So just having a bass that does vibrate enough that you can feel it helps, because then even if you don't, can't play louder to, to hear your pitch, being able to feel it is great. That bright setup helps. And then also uh, instilling a healthy sense of paranoia in your playing, I think, can be good. And what I mean by that is if there is foul in the intonation water, back off. And if it sounds better, it's probably you. Now, backing off, uh, by that I mean back off with the bow. You want to keep the left hand engaged, and that is a technique that you learn with time. If the pitch is a little weird, I'll back off and listen really wide, and then uh, and then try to lock back in. So another thing that I think is super important for hearing yourself in orchestra is practice just hearing yourself. That sounds maybe simple or weird, but like the more I practice my bass outside of orchestra, the more I am able to kind of pinpoint that sound in orchestra, and also frankly, the more secure I am with my intonation. Also, this is maybe a curveball for a lot of folks, but there are some really cool innovations in the bass world, and I don't want to suggest that you have to buy a different bass to be able to hear yourself in orchestra, but my friend, the wonderful bass luthier Arnold Schnitzer, came up with this very cool bass. I have this weird thing that I developed, which I call ergonomic contrabass. And if you look at old bass players, they all have this contorted physiology where their head is forward, the right shoulder is lower than the left, you know, from the bow right. versus fingering, and they're bent over at the hips mm. or the mid-back. Mm. And I thought to myself, that's because they play in a section or with a drummer, and they're trying to hear themselves. Yeah. So they got to get their head in front of the strings. So I thought to myself, why don't I give them some sound holes in the upper rib so that they can hear themselves a little bit better? So I tried it, and lots of people thought it worked. 
And it's a cool concept that I can't believe more people haven't experimented with. So some techniques suggested to me, and people often ask, why are these little yellow things up here? They were gone for a few months, but they're back. These are earplugs, and I have them up there because I never know when it's gonna get loud on stage. So the method of putting the earplug in the right ear, I tested this out at that mariachi concert, and it does seem to help kind of focus me on my playing because I am being a bit protected from the, the brass, if they're over there, or the percussion, what's over there, usually brass, in groups I play in, but I can still hear myself, so that is helpful. What I discovered, and this is just me, everybody's gonna have a different experience, is that this kind of got me a little bit too introspective with my perception. So I was really listening to my pitch and focusing, but I wasn't really listening big. And that's what I find really helpful, is just to listen wide. My old uh, band teacher at Northwestern, Don Owens, talked about having big ear balls. You got your eyeballs, you got your ear balls. I love Don Owens, who's such a great teacher. Uh, and just really, being perceptive of everything that's going around on around you, I find that super crucial for dialing in my pitch and making sure that I'm really blending. And I find that the the more intently I listen to everything, the better I hear my sound. I remember sharing a stand with the wonderful Joseph Conyers of the Philadelphia Orchestra. He's now the new principal bassist there. This is when he was 19 and I was like, I don't know, old, older than 19. Uh, and I remember him just pointing out all these things in the orchestra rehearsal that I wasn't even paying attention to. I was so focused on me and myself and I and maybe the bass section, but he was talking about the second clarinet and all this. Maybe that's why he's principal bass of Philadelphia now. But I do find that the more I really listen to everything, the more I can feel myself as a part of that. And so I actually found that I was more aware of my playing and more able to hear myself and hear my intonation and my contribution without the earplugs. Again, just me. But I find that just awareness is super helpful. So some of these things are a little tricky here to, to try out. You can't necessarily just go buy another bass. You can experiment with strings, of course, and I've done many reviews of strings, which I will link up to here, but that can help. Uh, also, just your orientation. Uh, and so a couple, a couple methods that are tried and true. One I mentioned is the ear against the neck. And some players, you will find that they are just always like this. And let me tell you, folks, this works. You can definitely pick yourself out of the bass section when you do this. I find that this is a little less distracting for me than the earplug in the right ear, but I also find that if I rely on this too much, uh, a, it becomes like a crutch, and B, it really, you know, walking around, think about if you walk around like this for an extended period of time. It's not gonna do wonders for your <laughs> your posture. So try trying to make sure that I'm not locked into that too much, and it's really just an emergency use kind of thing. That's, that's my approach with that. I have found it very helpful to orient myself so that I'm a bit more over the bass. And, and so again, without throwing your body out of alignment <laughs> as much as possible, we're always kind of like, on the edge of throwing our body out playing bass. But what, if you can find a way, or I've found this helpful anyway, to get your head a little bit more over the bass, I find that that helps me to kind of hear those overtones and those highs and those things that really define my pitch and my tone a little bit better. So that combined with setting up so I can feel the vibrations of my bass and then the occasional ear check, I find to be super helpful. The other thing, and I, I don't know if you can do this, you probably can in every situation, but if you can advocate for yourself and maybe find a way not to sit right next to the tuba and the low brass, or put yourself in a place where you can hear a bit better, that will do wonders. I have been amazed these last few seasons as I've subbed off and on with the San Francisco Symphony. What a difference my experience is if I'm at the very back wall by the edge of the stage versus right next to the tuba versus a riser down and near the violas. It's like a whole different orchestra. It's a whole different section. It's a whole different experience for me. So if possible, even a couple feet makes a difference. Even turning your, your, your stool or orient yourself uh, makes a difference. So if you can find some way to get a little bit of separation between you and whatever is causing a lot of that interference, again, I know not always possible, but if you can do that, that's another one of the most 
uh, result getting ways of hearing yourself better. And then the last thing that I use all the time and it, it works better if I practice using this uh, is to just really listen for the ring tones of the bass and to also watch my open strings for sympathetic vibrations where applicable. So what I mean by that is if I'm on this low G, if I'm in tune, this G is gonna go crazy, this open G. And if I'm not in tune, it's not. And I can both feel that in my body, I can hear that without the orchestra, and even with the orchestra, I can see that. So not all notes will ring that well. This F sharp, not as good as this low G, but so many of these, even the B flat, you get a really high harmonic if you if you get that. Uh, even the E flat to an extent, they will have uh, sympathetic vibrations on your other open strings. And I find that just going through and really slowly warming up, thinking about sympathetic vibrations is really helpful and really orienting myself toward the natural harmonics and trusting but verifying that my fingers are on the right spots. And I've done a whole video on that. If you want to learn more about that, check it out here. We've got it linked up and we'll see you in the next one.